You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. Good afternoon, listeners, and welcome again to the Three Feet Radio Show. Joining me in the studio after a short hiatus is our, is my co-host, Luke Herbert. G'day, Luke. G'day, Ben, and look, it's great to be back in the studio We're after the second part of our renovations were done, and I must say, though, your coffee machine got lost in the post. Did it really, Luke? Yeah, I know, that's this terrible service with the New Zealand Post. <laughs> but I must say, Luke, I'm very excited to have our special guest today. Ah, and you're not the only one. I have been really looking forward to this interview, you know. It's been, I've been itching to do it, so why don't you get us on the way, Ben? I most certainly will. We've been joining us today is recent Silver Ferns um, call-up and new Central Pulse on in Millioran Wells. Hi, Millioran. How are you today? Hello. Good thing. How are you guys doing? Very well, thank you. And just to first of all get things rolling, what was the reasoning for moving across to the Central Pulse from the Queensland Firebirds? Well, it was always something I'd kind of um, always thought about, you know, going over and playing in New Zealand. It seemed like it would be a really cool opportunity and something really cool to um, be able to do, um, especially with my dad being Māori. Um, but look, I mean, honestly, I've been, I've been sitting on the Firebird bench for four years now and I thought it's definitely time to give something else a try and, you know, see if I could actually go play somewhere else. And just while we're speaking of family, was family another reason for your move across the ditch to New Zealand? Yeah, it makes it a lot of a, an easier transition. I think knowing that I have still got a lot of family over there, it's not like I'm moving somewhere where I don't really, I mean, obviously I don't know too many of the girls um, yet, but yeah, I've got a lot of family over there, which makes it a bit of an easier transition. And obviously that easy, that easier transition means that um, you won't have to worry as much because I know that you get some of the younger girls that are bench players at other ANZ teams in your own. They struggle to sort of fit in early on, but hopefully that transition for you will be a lot easier. Yeah, well, I mean, hopefully, um, meeting all the girls in camp last week was a, was a good start on, you know, a few of the Pulse girls. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to get stuck into 2015, so it should be a good year. Speaking of 2015, um, what is it going to be like to train and play with someone like Irene Van Dyke in the Pulse? Um, I'm so excited about it. I mean, I think it's going to be unbelievable. The wealth of knowledge that, I mean, obviously she's just such an amazing and such a great player that I just couldn't even, I can't wait to start working with her and I can't wait, you know, to learn so many things off her. It'll just be, it'll be unbelievable. It'll be a really, really good experience. And Irene Van Dyke too, I mean, I've had a little bit to do with her over the years in New Year. And away from Nepal, she's just a beautiful person too and such an amazing um, personality. And she's like a mother figure to everyone. So hopefully that will help you to settle in and um, has a bit of, and will have a bit of a calming influence on you and the rest of Pulse Girls next year. Yeah, definitely. And I, um, you're not the first person I've heard that of actually. So many people have told me that she's just such an amazing person that, um, you know, it makes it even more exciting to be able to work with her. Just switching gears, you've been called up to the, the Silverfern squad and it's well it's caused a, a bit of a stir, so can you give us your take on it? Yeah, look I, I mean I know it definitely has caused a bit of a stir. Um look I mean I got the opportunity, um I I got a call asking me if I would make myself available for for selections and I mean I'm never one to say no to an opportunity, which is obviously why I'm I'm going over to New Zealand as well. Um, so I think I just, you know, this opportunity came up and, um, obviously, yeah, obviously I didn't say no. So I just took it with both hands and this is where it's taken me. I mean, I never would imagine, um, being here at the end of a week in New Zealand, um, at all. I mean, I think I was grateful enough to be able to go over there and, you know, see how everything works over there, meet everyone. That felt big enough at the time as it was. So this has just blown my mind. Have you thought about maybe if you do end up probably making it out on court for the Silver Ferns and all your own, it would be a bit weird maybe coming up against, uh, like Kaiti, for example. Obviously, she was your captain of the Firebirds, and I believe you two were quite close. Yeah, look, I mean, Kaiti is an amazing person and um, an amazing player as well. I never thought that I would um, would have to come up against her this early. Um, obviously, I knew I'd have to play her in ANZ next year. Um, but look, we always have a really good tussle on court, and I think being so close will make it um, 
make um make it more fiery on book probably against each other. So if I do make it out there against her. All right, and I'm just going to toss a bit of a hand grenade your way because I'm Australian-born <laughs> and I lived in New Zealand the last 15 years, so you understand why I asked this question, though. What nationality do you consider yourself? Do you then say, a bit like myself, consider yourself a quasi-Australian Kiwi? Yeah, well, it's, um, I guess, yeah, obviously a bit of both. We were, obviously I was born in Australia, but we were born in a Kiwi household, so... Um, we were always raised supporting the All Blacks and Silverfans and everything like that. So it feels quite natural, obviously, to be going over and, um, you know, going over into New Zealand. It doesn't feel like anything new or like, you know, on that side of things. Um, but obviously I've come through the Australia, the Aussie net, the Aussie system. So, um, I guess a bit of both, but now I can obviously definitely see where my allegiance lies. So, and, um, so excited! I'm so excited for it, and it feels just so natural and so normal that it's um yeah, it feels new with pride, I guess. I believe you grew up and we were in, in country Queensland in Bundaberg. What are your memories of growing up in country Queensland? Yeah, look, um, they were always good. I had definitely had chances to move down to Brisbane um in my schooling years, but I think um you know being from the country gives you a little bit of a different insight um, to, you know, people that would grow up in the city and the girls that have grown up in the city. I always had to travel, like, four plus hours for any kind of netball, um, for any state teams and things like that. But, you know, we were by the beach and you run around cane fields and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't have changed anything at all. It was a great experience. Sort of just staying with the theme of you growing up in the country, Dan, what I take from it is that it's made you more self-reliant as a person. Do you think that is fair to say? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I love growing up in the country and I love the little town and, you know, everyone knows everyone and it's quite a close, um, a quite a close community. So I guess you get that sense of really doing things for other people and, you know, you put in any help, anyone else who needs help kind of thing, especially when there was, like, floods or anything like that happened, so. Um, we've interviewed Laura Bites on the show um, once or twice now, Mira, and she was telling us um, the amount of time she goes to far out country Queensland and just the passion for netball they have in these little country towns and how thankful that, um, that these little girls are for you guys to make the effort to go so far out. It's, it, they certainly do appreciate that, and the passion there for netball is huge, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, and I definitely 110% agree with that. I've done a lot of clinics with her as well in, in rural Queensland and country areas, and it's so true. The kids just are so thankful and so grateful, and they just want to know absolutely everything about you. And I guess, you know, they might not get as many people through um, who want to be there, want to do clinics with them. So when they do, you just see the excitement in their eyes, and they glue to every single word you say. So it is a really nice feeling, um, you know, to go there and see these kids that are just so passionate about every single thing, like, you know, and about sport and netball and everything. So I love going out to rural, like, rural areas and smaller country towns. It's really, it's a really good feel. And just a brief follow-up before we move on. Was Bundaberg badly affected by the 2011 Queensland floods? Yeah, look, it was really horribly affected and it was, a lot of people that I was close to and a lot of people that, you know, I didn't really know too well, but there was more people that were affected than weren't affected. And in times like that, I actually went home and helped um, clean up. And, um, yeah, it, you know, it, it was complete devastation. I've never I'm, I've never witnessed anything like it before. So it was really hard to see, like, you know, my hometown had been completely almost, you know, torn apart. But at the same time, it was so heartwarming to see how much a community can pull together in times like that. So, you know, you see two sides of the spectrum in the same event. Obviously, New York, despite that grand final result in the ANL, we went down to the Victorian Fury 51-49. What was it like spending that month or so with those fusion girls? Was it an enjoyable experience? Because I'm pretty sure I saw on your social media, maybe on Instagram, you guys were always having a lot of fun away from playing. Yeah, look, I think um, a lot of the girls I've grown up with um, for quite a long time and I've played for quite a few years now. And we do have such a tight-knit team and I think that's something Queenslanders, you know, have always valued that, you know, you band together and you play for your state and you play for, you know, the pride and everything like that. So, yeah, it was it was a great um, a great time spending it with those, those girls before I head over to New Zealand. So, And they were so excited for me all as well, so... 
that makes it all, all that bit better. How important do you think the knowledge you gain from the ANL is going to be when you play in the ANZ Championship? I ask this because we don't have a direct equivalent of the ANL in New Zealand. Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, I think the idea behind ANL, you know, is quite well, and there's definitely, I mean, I know myself being, you know, a bench player for a few years now that you just you need that hit out on court and you need to get um, match play. Um, to keep going. So, um, yeah, look, I think it's an important thing, but probably the fact that it doesn't, you know, run at the same time that it is after the season, um, it almost, yeah, feels like a bit of a separate, a separate competition. So it doesn't really feel like it threats you too much for ANZ, I guess. And just doing a bit of research um, before we had a chat to you today, Amelia Ann, obviously it's on the Firebirds website, but it's not on the Pulse website just yet. You list um, Kira Masood, who was known as Kira Trump, as your netball hero. I remember when uh. Kira played, and Kira was an, an, an ultimate team player, and she was had a lot of guts on court too. So um, is that what the guts, is that what sort of made you look up to Kira? Yeah, I think um, when, I, when I first were, made it into the Firebirds, I think, she was one of the players that took me under her wing and you just, I've never met a person with so much passion and just such, like such a, a good soul and just absolute passion beyond anything, for everything on the net court and everything off and everything's about the team and, you know, she took everything else above herself first and so I just really saw her, you know, as someone I would love to be, someone that gives so much to the team and who just, you know, is able to fill everyone else up around them with so much passion and pride and excitement and energy all at the same time. That was, um, yeah, that's what I really took from her, I think. And just one more before we wrap up and know your own. Um, you must have been uh, pretty happy for Claire McMinniman, who also is another ultimate team player, to have been away from netball for a little while that she was and then come back and then be picked in the diamond was a pretty good achievement for Claire. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, Claire is one of the most hardest working players that, you know, um, had to come back to the Firebirds was a great thing. And then we just, you know, saw how much work she put in that she deserves it more than anything. So um, it's wonderful for her. All right, Amelia Ann, thanks very much for joining us today. We thoroughly appreciate it. No worries at all. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.